Yes, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be doing something different. I've been going through my comments and I've seen that there are some people who have been asking different questions. Today, I decided to make a video answering one of these questions. So this question comes from Daniel. He is asking how to identify the main power rail and power circuit. So before we get started to answering this question, I would encourage you if you have any question, you can put it in a comment and in this season I'm going to go through all the questions and I'm going to be making videos answering those questions. So this is a very good question because you cannot fix a motherboard without knowing how to identify these power rails. Most of the issues that computers have are usually related to power rails or are related to power and those power faults usually happen on the power rails or power circuits. So just to clarify, the motherboard has got more than one power rails. So there is what we call main power rail and what we call secondary power rails. The main power rails, these are voltages that are on the motherboard even if your laptop is shut down. And the secondary power rails, these are voltages or power rails that turn on after you have turned on your laptop. But mostly when someone is asking about power rails, usually they are asking for the main power rail which is known as 19 volts in many of the motherboards. However, there are some motherboards whereby the main power rail is not 19. You have seen in some MacBooks, some of them have got the main power rail as 12, others have got 8. Even in some other Dells and Lenovo's, some of them have got 8 and 13. So this is the voltage that powers up the power supplies that make up 3.3 .3 volts, that make up 5 volts, that make up RAM volts that go and power up the charging section. So this is the main voltage that powers up different power supplies on the motherboard. So how do you identify these power rails? So the first method you can use to identify these power rails is from the power source. So if you take a look at the power sources of any motherboard that you're working on, you will see that there are power rails that are transporting or that are moving the voltage from the charger to the next MOSFETs or to any power chips that control that voltage before it is supplied on the motherboard. So if you take a look at this ASUS, you can see that we have got the charger here and we have got the battery here. And both of these power sources, you would see that they have got these big rails. You can see there is this big rail here which is connected to the battery connector. And then on the power jack here, you can see there are these power rails which are nearby the power jack. So if you are looking for power rails, you must look at the power sources. These are the best places to start identifying these power rails. Another thing that you can use is the MOSFETs. As you know, the MOSFETs on the motherboard, they don't usually do anything different from controlling and switching power. Most of the MOSFETs you see on the motherboards here are always connected to power sources, power rails and other voltage sources. As you see here in the schematics, so one MOSFET is connected to the power source and another MOSFET is connected to the ground. So on every circuit that you see which has got two MOSFETs, there is always one connected to ground and another is connected to the source. And the middle of these two MOSFETs is where you usually get the output. So if you look at the motherboard, you will see that there is a MOSFET here, there is another MOSFET here, there are these MOSFETs. Uh, we have this MOSFET here. There are these MOSFETs, there are these MOSFETs, there is also this MOSFET. And one thing that you can also realize, that most of these MOSFETs are connected or nearby coils or inductors. And actually that's the study thing that you can also use to identify these power rails. You can see that all MOSFETs are nearby coils. You can see here also there are coils and MOSFETs, except here because these MOSFETs are regulating the input voltage that comes in into the charger. And the same happens here. These MOSFETs are regulating the input voltage from the battery. So the fourth method is using the power rails on the motherboard. So the reason why you call voltages power rails actually comes from the rails that are on the motherboard. You can see we are having these small, small rails around here. And we also have these big ones, like this one. We're also having these ones. You can see we have this big rail here, which is connected to this processor power supply. But what you have to know that these rails, they usually indicate current. So what I mean is, the bigger the rail, the bigger the current. 
you'd be surprised that most of the biggest rails on the motherboard transport the least voltages. So you can see this one is quite big, but it's powering up the CPU. And as you know, the CPU is powered by usually 1 point something volts or 1.5 or 0 0.9 volts. But the current is quite huge. So most big rails transport a lot of current, but not necessarily volts. So if you come looking for 19 volts and you think just because this rail is big, it should be the one for 19, you, you are mistaken. However, you can use the size of these rails to identify the main power rails. So let's say the area you are looking for is for 19. You would see that each rail would be a little bit bigger than the rest. As you can see that we're having a power source here and you can see that there is no direct co connection from the power source up to this side. And even if when you flip the motherboard, you can still see there is nothing that shows that this power source is connected to any of these rails around here. However, when you look nearby this power source, you'll see that you are having these two MOSFETs. And as we know, most of these input voltages are regulated by two MOSFETs. And after those two MOSFETs, there is usually a fuse. So we can use our experience to know that this rail is the one that connects to this power jack. And we can prove that by using our multimeter. If we set it into continuity and connect these props, one from here, and then here, you can hear the beep, which means these two pins are connected. So if you are looking for where 19 volts that comes into the power jack goes around here, you should look for it from these nearby rails. So another thing that you can use for identifying these power rails is the fuse. So as you know that most of these high voltages, they need protection and most of the protection is through the fuse. So the fuse on the laptop motherboard, they look like this, uh, like this one and this one. So this one seems to be connected to the screen connector because the screen connector also uses 19 for the backlight. There is usually a fuse. Now this fuse is the one that protects the main motherboard from the voltage that comes into the power jack. And this fuse is the one that protects the motherboard from the voltage that comes out of the battery. So you can use the fuse to identify the main power rails. So another thing that you can use to identify these power rails is capacitors. So on the motherboard here, there are many capacitors. There are these small ones, there are these size, there are this size, and there are these ones. So all of these are capacitors. In some motherboards, you'd even find those electronic capacitors. Most of these power rails are connected to capacitors, and most of these capacitors are a little bit bigger. If you are looking to identify the main power rails, you should identify areas where you have capacitors. But you should also be able to differentiate between the capacitors connected to the voltage of the CPU and that connected to the other power rails. Those are six methods that you can use to identify the power rails. One, you can use the input sources, that is the battery connector and power jack. Two, you can use the MOSFETs. Three, you can use the coils. Four, you can use the size of the rails on the motherboard. And five, you can use the fuse. And six, you can use capacitors. I hope this video has given you some clues. So if you have any other question that you want me to do a video about, you can put it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer it. If you have enjoyed the video, you can like it, you can share it. And if this is your first time to the channel, you can also subscribe. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.